uh, for those who may need deliverance. Okay, I need freedom. Sex problems. Okay. So um, when we look at sex problem, it is a uh, recurring unclean thoughts and acts as it relates to sex. It can be, it can look like lust. It can look like the spirit of perversion, incest, fornication. It comes in through masturbation, fantasy, sex experiences, homosexuality, adultery, prostitution, to name a few. Okay. Again, I want you to remember that for, for some of for many of these things, it can be open doors happen that came from our ancestors. It could have come from our parents. It could have come from things that we've done. It could have came from our grandparents or um, abuse, sexual abuse. It could have came from mental abuse. It could have came from emotional abuse, physical abuse, all types of abuse. These are still open doors. So sometimes these, these open doors have been open and we didn't understand and we didn't even know. Okay. We didn't even know. And while we're here on the sex problems, I can use myself as, as an example. And I tell more and more of that in my testimony. If you hadn't seen that, go and go and take a look at my testimony. But um, for instance, incest, you know, I was sexually abused and incest was there because it was a family member. Okay. And so five years old, what am I to do? Right. But it's still in the spirit realm. It still was so. OK, a door was still open, whether it was my fault, whether I had anything to do with it or not, whether I initiated or not. This was something that was brought on to me, but it still was an open door. OK. OK. And so because of that, that open door of incest, then that open door opened up other doors to. Um. Anger, distrust, resentment, you know, malice and bitterness and distrust and so many other things. Right Now, you're a little kid, you're growing up, you're doing the best you know how to survive all this aftermath. Right. So I just want you to understand that many times these things happen and we are just basically surviving, you know, knowingly or un unknowingly. But I want you to understand that still in the spirit, whether we knew or not, it is still so it is still an open door. And if that door is open, then it gives the enemy access to come in, access to come in and torment, access to come in and put on this this yoke that is there, you know, reoccurring thoughts, these lies, these different things that we can't seem to break is because we need the power of the anointing. Hallelujah. To destroy those yokes. Hallelujah. Even if it was some things that we did, we knew what we were doing. For instance, let's say for instance, um, it could have been. Mm, masturbation, right? OK, that would be something an individual knowing they're doing. They may not know is wrong. Maybe they you know, maybe they know it's wrong. Maybe not, you know, but in any case, it's still an open door. So whether you knew it or didn't know it, it is still so in the realm of the spirit. OK, the enemy is real nasty. He will move upon um, the, a child in the mother's womb. He can come in that way. He can come in so many different ways. He doesn't care that you are a child. He didn't care that I was five. He didn't care that somebody is 55. He don't care if somebody is 105. He don't care. Wherever he sees, there is an open door. Remember, he is going around like a hungry, roaring lion seeking whom has an open door, whom he can devour, who he can destroy. And here's the thing, as long as we go on without being taught, not having the understanding, and guess what? The enemy has access to continue tormenting us continuously. Just, just think about it for a moment. Just a few of the things that I've given an example of. Just think about those things, how he has tormented us before we come or before we're coming into the understanding. Wait a minute. This ain't me. This is the enemy. Right? 
And so what God is saying now is that I am here through revival. I am here to deliver and to set my people free. Somebody say freedom, hallelujah, belongs to me. Thank you, Lord.